Well, well the thing that I, I remember about Patchwork is just the amount of people that came in and out of here. Like some of the greatest artists, I mean, from every genre of music. And, you know, this was, if, if you could get to the point where you could record in here, then it was easy for you to obtain those relationships, you know, and um, it was right in the middle of everything. You know, people don't talk about that. Like, so the patchwork falls right in the middle of a lot of the hot spots. You know what I'm saying? So uh, it was just, it was just cool. And it was in, and it's inside of the city. You know, uh, for a while we had to go pretty far out to record, you know, and uh, just early patchwork was just the place to be. You know what I'm saying? Um, what made it special was, it was just the environment. Like I say, it was, it was the people, it was the plaques on the wall, knowing that Outkast came through here, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and Lil John was here, and like all of these different people will, will come here and record here. You know, um, see Leslie's name, you know, as far as who records he's mixed and all of those types of things. It was just, it was just an environment, you know. It was uh, sort of like a hit factory of the South, you know what I'm saying? And it gave you that feeling, man. And the cool thing about it, since it was in such close quarters, like people who were recording in other rooms had to pass you again. And that just made it dope, you know. And that was before all the beef and all that kind of stuff. So it was just like, it's a good place for you to make good music and solidify great relationships. People were amazing, man. Uh, Les, like I said, Leslie Brathwaite is one of my best homies, still to this day. Uh, Corey, who was my engineer, you know, is my, my homie homie. We don't even really do music like that no more. Like, he don't even engineer no more. He's a, you know, established mixer now. You know, um, it was just family. And then Curtis, he was, a, he was a, I've only met one other person who, who reminded me of him at any capacity. Uh, was Molly at Tree Sound. Like, it wasn't too many people that were like Curtis that came from the streets. Like, so yeah, he ran Patchwork, but he understood the stuff that we were going through. You know, uh, there were some things that happened here that would never go past these walls. You know, and... It was always about, you know, making sure that the clients were comfortable and that this was an environment that was clean, that was dope, but still gave you a homely environment and it still felt like you made music. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, I, like I told people, like, this, there was times where I wasn't doing so well. You know, and Curtis, he helped me. You know, I was paying my patchwork bill monthly at one time. You know, and everybody doesn't do that. You know, so Curtis held me down, you know, to a point where, you know, Universal was tripping. And I, I was like, Curtis, I don't have that budget, homie. You know what I'm saying? And I need some help. And he never let the world know that. You know, if I wouldn't have said it, nobody would have ever said it. But I know that Curtis is, is, is real humble, you know, and he, he don't want to, he wants the light to be on Patchwork, but not him. But it's really about him. You know, whether he want, he kept it all together through the transitions, through all of it, when people weren't recording no more. I remember when Curtis told me, this is funny, this has nothing to do with, Curtis told me about SoundClouds way before anybody knew uh, uh, about the clouds. You know what I'm saying? He's like, bro, I'm telling you, this is gonna be the wave in two years, bro. Like, you need to get up on these clouds. And, and, and we would just talk. And there would be times, man, that I was going through stuff with the labels, I would just sit in the office and just talk to Kurt. You know, there would be times I would just come by and sit and watch Leslie do a mix. You know, Jazzy Faye and Regina Davenport were the first two people to let me into any studio because people were scared of me. Uh, and I was a different person. But, uh, like, Jazzy would come over here to record and I would follow Jazzy over here. And it was just, you know, the environment, the plaques, the people. You know, I sat in on Snoop session over here in the A room, and I was like, dude, I want to record here. So it went from me sneaking in sessions to, you know, being able to sort of block everything out for me. It was, it was, it was a growth. I grew up, to a certain degree, I grew up in Patchwork. 
Yeah. Um, one thing about Curtis is he actually does care about artists and artistry. You know, he's, he's like a silent giant, you know what I'm saying? But I listen to him. And he's been able to walk that thin line of helping to still making money. You know, that's something that I just learned how to do. You know, my heart, you know, pulled me down to I was flat broke. You know, and I found out that it, it is a business. And you have to make money in order to keep the establishment here. But yeah, Patchwork is definitely an establishment. And the sad thing about it is, you know, a lot of times I record in studios. I don't have to record in nobody's studio. I can do all that stuff at home now. Just like I can work out at home. I have a gym at home. I still go to the YMCA. I still go to the boys club because it's about keeping that opportunity here for somebody else. See, that's part of the reason why music is in the situation that, it, that it's in now because it's not a community uh, situation anymore. Like when I came to Atlanta, dude, it was, it was all of us. It was Oomp, it was Lil John, it was Killer Mike, it was Outkast, it was Tip, it was like all of these Bone Crusher, it was all of these people. And we sort of, DJ Jelly, we sort of worked together without even being in the same clique. Like it was Patchwork, it was Stankonia, it was Tree Sign, it was all of these places. And we went to all of these different places. They were our homes. Like, and, and we went there for different sounds and different engineers. And, and it was a community, it was a sound. And Patchwork is a very, very, very integral part of that. And even if not any, if, if not for nothing else, but for the history, you know, we see all of these white establishments that kept just for the history of it. If nothing else, but to preserve our history. Like, hey dude, like this is one of the places where David Banner crafted his sound. You know, this is one of the first places that a lot of these artists that people love, this is one of the first place, major recording studios that they recorded in. You know, it means something. It should mean something. You know, that's similar to us letting some of these record stores close, man. There's, there's no way, man, that earwax should be closed. No fucking way. There's no way that Patchwork should ever have any problems. You know, in my personal opinion. You know, and, and that's not just Patchwork. That's Stankonia. That's any other one of these places that helped us become who we are now. That's Tree Sound. It's any of these places. It's not just one studio. It's all of these places that help us become the icons that we are. We can't walk away and leave them. I just don't believe that. Man. And I think Curtis should be applauded for, you know, the work. He ain't all good. He ain't all bad. He's just Kurt. And I love him for that. <laughs>